There are various people in the world today who are able to do feats of strength, endurance, and more without breaking a sweat. You're likely thinking of massive bodybuilders who can do these incredible feats of human excellence. But many out there are not muscular brutes. Some of them are monks. That's right, you all know the legends of monks and their skills, and it's time to get into the details. So from walking on fingers to not feeling a drill against their head, allow me to show you 20 superpowers monks have in real life. Number 20. Superhuman Strength Now, let's rewind history a little bit, because I want to talk about one monk named Omi from the animated series Shaolin Showdown. Omi was a young monk who, in the very first episode, went and showed his fellow students that to be a true monk, they had to learn to walk on their fingers, even doing it for them to show just how good he was. You might watch that and go, yeah, that can't happen, except that it can and does in the world of monks, because there are actually many monks who can indeed go and walk on two fingers, making you no doubt feel stupid when you can't even walk in a straight line without any issues. Don't worry though, we've all been there. So how in the world does this actually work? The same way that everything works, intense training. Now don't go starting up a Rocky style montage training regimen, it's not exactly that straightforward. Rather, the monks in question actually go and do various practices to try and make their hands, and by extension their fingers, as strong as they possibly can be. They'll begin by punching dirt, then they go and punch wood and move on from there. They even do a technique where they put a nail in a tree and use only their fingers to get it out. And the end result? Fingers that are so strong, you can walk on them. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Zhao Rui Head now, for the record, this is one of many superpowers where you have to say you should not try it at home. If for no other reason than I want you to stay alive long enough to watch the next video. Because I'm selfish like that. The next superpower has to deal with a monk named Zhao Rui. In a set of videos, he's gone and done a stunt, if that's what you want to call it, where he goes and puts a drill next to his head, turns it on, and is unaffected as it bores into his skull. <laughs> Except that it didn't break the skin at all, hence his superpower. Not impressed? Well, he then goes on to use things like an iron bar against his head and would easily bend it, then breaks stones on his head. And why? Well, because he can. Oh, and as for the drill, he did that apparently for 10 seconds without any kind of injury. I'm just cringing thinking about it. So how in the world is any of this at all logical? Well, according to him, he spent years learning the technique known as Sanda, which draws upon the inner strength of the body to make it more tough. And lest you think he was faking it, he admitted one time that he did mess up the technique and actually did put a hole in his head, but then he got better at it. He's done this technique in front of people, so it's legit, allegedly. Number 18. The Neck Trick now, I'm saying trick, even though this is supposed to be about superpowers, because this one has already been exposed as an act in its own way, but I'll appreciate the setup for it and talk about it anyways. As you can see in this clip, a Shaolin monk is going and using a special technique to go and bend spears far beyond what they should, and doing it with just his neck. Then, to add to the drama, he has a stone slab put upon his back, all while the spears are still bent, and then his fellow monk slams a sledgehammer into the stone to break it off. Because clearly just removing the stone slab the easy way is no fun at all in a performance. 
Sadly though, as I noted earlier, it's all a trick. The spears are not unlike other circus props that are used to go and try to stimulate strength. Furthermore, the breaking of the stone isn't that impressive because the stone is shielding the monk's back from the blow. Still though, you do have to admit it puts on a good show and isn't that all what we really want in the end? To just be entertained? Number 17. Monk Meditating in Oil Now if you watch enough kung fu movies, and admit it, you watch a lot of them, you'll know that for many monks, their greatest superpower is not that of any kind of physical ability, but their mental and spiritual one. Now I'm not talking about going to the astral planes, at least not yet, but rather the act of meditation that they do in order to go and push their bodies to new levels. We all know that the mind can have a powerful effect on the body, but just how far can these monks push things? Well, how about a guy who meditates as he bathes in boiling oil? That's really happening. As you can see, the monk in question is well and truly in a vat of liquid that's over a large fire and appears to be boiling. The man himself is meditating and only occasionally goes and asks for things from his fellow monks, but not help, just various things that can help him focus even more as he sits in that liquid. <laughs> This thing went viral when it first got onto the internet, and can you blame it? There are many who say that it's fake because we honestly don't know the temperature of the liquid, but until they can prove that it's a farce, we're on the side of this mental warrior monk. Number 16. Running on Water Ninja movies, and I know you watch those too, have shown us just how powerful the art of ninjutsu is. But it's also helped to create a bunch of tall tales about how the great ninja are and their abilities, with one of the biggest being that they could walk on water. But for the monks of the world, they can, and do it for real. Well, kind of. It's honestly impossible to walk on water without some serious help, but monks have a way to simulate that without being full-on cheating. What they do is put very thin strips of wood just under the water and connect them via strips of cloth. Now, you might be crying out, dude, that's cheating. But think about it like this. While you might think that it's cheating, those boards are not there to hold you up, merely to go and be a quick foothold. As a result, monks have to be incredibly light-footed in order to overcome the obstacle, which one monk did when he went and did a 125 meter water walk. And if you still think it's cheating, why don't you go and try it? Number 15, One Finger Handstand. Now we've already shown you some monks going and walking on their fingers, but how about one who's literally balancing on his finger? Yes, finger, singular, as in all of his body weight on just one digit. That's pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? And that's exactly what this monk is showing a crowd in glorious fashion. In fact, the only support that he has is a wooden board where his feet are, and you know that this isn't giving him that much protection. It's more of a safety measure so that he doesn't fall over as he's trying to get his balance right. Not unlike how all of us were trained at first to do handstands against walls so that we wouldn't fall flat on our face if we didn't have a good coordination. Think about all that pressure that's on that one little finger. It's gotta be immense and just as important, he's doing it for many, many seconds. This is not a blink and you missed it moment because he's going full tilt and it's very impressive. Yes, he does have a little item he's putting his finger on for protection, but again, that doesn't help much in the overall. Number 14, needle and glass. Be on the internet a lot, especially on YouTube a lot, and you're going to go and see videos of techniques that honestly boggle the mind. One of the most popular by far in regards to the monks of the world is that of going and taking a needle, throwing it at a pane of glass, and then either popping a balloon with it or just straight up punching it through the glass itself. This video has been done by various monks over the years and has raised a lot of questions about what is actually going on, because that is either a perfect throw, a perfect aim, a perfect amount of strength, or it's all absolutely fake. Which one is it, I wonder? Well, thankfully, we can prove the answer via the source that no one can deny, and if they do, they're fools. 
the Mythbusters. That's right, they went and did this very test with their build team, Tori Grant Carey, and tried to get the needle to go right through the glass. It didn't work, so then they brought in a Major League Baseball pitcher, an experienced one who threw a perfect game no less, and had him try it, and he actually shattered the needle. So that happened, and it just makes you remember that while it may look cool, not everything that you see on the internet is real. Number 13. The Iron Crotch now, I'm not making this up, I honestly don't want to talk about it, but it's apparently a monk superpower so I have to. Because yes, there is a series of techniques that's used by monks to apparently make the crotch hard as iron. And no, not in the way that you're thinking, that's just disgusting. I'm referring to the fact that the crotch area, while important to the male anatomy, is easily one of the biggest weaknesses. It's meant to be soft and fleshy and has no bones, so thus it can be very easy to inflict pain upon, a well-aimed kick or knee to that area, and you're going down, 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 and your voice will be a lot higher. Now, I'm not going to elaborate on the technique because honestly it's disgusting, but in truth, what they're trying to do, loosely, is to improve the blood flow to the area and then go out and make it able to withstand greater levels of pressure and power against it, not unlike you would train other parts of your body. And if you're curious, yes, apparently if you're able to withstand this training, you'll be able to have better performance, which is an odd thing for monks because they usually take an oath of celibacy. Number 12. Tumo. Now let's look at another technique that is one that seems to boggle the mind in terms of abilities. This one's called Tumo, and it's another in a long line of techniques that's said to prove the power of meditation. But what does this one do? Well, it's all about body control and temperature. According to those who have witnessed this, and there are plenty of videos about it as you're seeing, the monks, typically in Tibet and other regions with cold mountains, will go and meditate in freezing cold temperatures. Then, to add to their struggle, they'll have cold cloths placed upon them. But as you watch, you're going to notice something rather peculiar. Mainly, there'll be steam coming from the wet cloths eventually. Was it simply that the cloths were warm instead of cold? Well, no. The monks are manipulating their body temperature in order to warm up the cloths, meaning that using only their mind and body control, they can manipulate their inner core temperature and prevent themselves from dying of exposure. And lest you think this is a trick, it's not so much. While we can't personally verify it, there was one scientist who studied the technique for 20 years and became a believer himself in the practice. What's more, if you really are able to focus, you can sometimes trick your body into thinking that you're warmer or colder than you actually are. This is just an extension of that. Number 11. Steel versus Head now, I've already shown you how the Shaolin monks are known for going and strengthening the various parts of their body so that they can perform incredible feats, but how far are they able to push that? Well, if you look at this video of a Shaolin master going and breaking a steel bar over his head, you'll see they can actually push it pretty far. The irony of this particular superpower is that it's honestly not that hard to explain for various reasons. For example, we already have seen plenty of people using karate to break bricks with their hands and wooden planks with their heads, and this is just an extension of that technique. Yes, the monks are perfectly fine having hard heads. You're welcome. Can we get back on track here? What they'll do is go and use various bars of stone and metal and repeatedly hit their heads with them so that certain parts of the skull actually become tougher. Because in a fight, sometimes going for the head is an easy way to win. But if your head is super hard, then not so much. And while the video itself may seem fake, the monk tests the metal, and when it breaks, you can hear a very metal sound as it hits the floor. Number 10. Monk Pillar Skill now, this one is one that's going to be irrefutable because honestly, it's pretty hard to say that it's fake when it's clear that it's not. 
If you think that this was just a weird practice, you'd be wrong. This is known as the monk pillar skill, where monks go and balance themselves on two small pillars while squatting in position, having their hands pressed against one another, and then they have a bowl upon their heads. And they just sit there, waiting for two whole hours. Now I could probably find a lot of ways to go and spend two hours, but then again I'm not a monk. And this would be what they do for fun. But back to the technique. It's easy to see why this is a training exercise for monks young and old. First and foremost, it's an exercise in patience. Just think about it. If you're in that position for two hours, you have to know how to control yourself, both mind and body, all to maintain that stance. Just as important though, if you move in the slightest, that bowl's gonna come down and you're going to be a failure. So the next time that someone tells you that no one can sit still, tell them about the monk pillar skill and then tell them to shut up. Number nine, lifted by spears. Here's another one that might just be defined as a trick, but even if it is slightly that, it's not to take away from what's being shown. You see, here we have a monk going and being lifted up by his fellow monks, or bros, monk bros? Super monk bros, perhaps? And then slowly lowered down onto a set of four spears, and then left to just be held up by them. The monk doesn't show any pain that we can see, and allows it to happen to him, and then stays there for many seconds before coming down. But what exactly is going on? Well, there's a few different ways that you can look at it. The superhuman way is that he's made his body so tough that the spears don't affect him, which technically could be true. The circus way is that the spears aren't exactly as sharp as you would expect, and thus aren't going to go and dig into his skin like you would think. The third and most logical way is the bed of nails technique. Now you've seen people sit on a bed of nails and be fine, right? Well that's because the distribution of the pointed nails is so even that it doesn't break the skin, and this is the same principle. Still though, I don't want to do it. I'm a little bit fragile. Number 8. One Point Meditation so now I'm going to really delve into the power of meditation as well as showcase how science can go and prove that superpowers exist within monks. Because if you've ever seen a set of images that seem to clash with one another, you'll know that the brain's not likely very well and it'll make you switch between the two. It's a headache for sure. The catch is though that with proper meditation, you'll not have to worry about it. Turns out that scientists have gone and tested the meditation power of monks and found that they were honestly able to use a technique called one point meditation to go and be able to fight this conflicting effect so that they could either switch over in their minds less often or just make it so that they would only focus on one image that they wanted. In short, they're getting the brain to do what they want instead of going crazy and trying to figure out what to do on their own. That's true power right there, and that's why you need to respect the art of meditation. Number seven, the drunken fist style. Now, yeah, I'm gonna go full Jackie Chan on you, because if you recall his legendary movie, The Legend of Drunken Master, you'll know that there's a technique where monks and other martial artists, like Jackie Chan, will get into a certain state of inebriation where they can do an unpredictable fighting style called drunken fist or drunken boxing and even make their bodies less susceptible to pain. However, when it comes to actual monks, they don't need to be drunk to go and do this technique. Rather, they'll use their bodies and minds in conjunction to go and create a false state of drunkenness and thus make themselves completely unpredictable on the battlefield. But why? Well, because if you don't know what your opponent's going to do, it's gonna make them pretty hard to stop. The irony of the technique is not only that it actually exists, but it's apparently a lot more complex than you realize. It's said that there was once eight different variations of the drunken fist, but sadly most have been lost to time. Still though, what we have now is pretty cool, and it's one to be appreciated. Number six, breaking boulders. One of the reasons that the monks of the world, especially the Shaolin kind, are so popular in culture is that when they're at their peak, see boss mode, they seem to be the most powerful people on the planet. 
which at times can be shown when they decide to go and straight up destroy boulders with their hands. Granted, these aren't the biggest boulders around, they aren't Chris Redfield after all, but they're full on rocks, and yet they can shatter them all the same. Just as important for this superpower is that these aren't the standard shape that you would see for various shattering attacks like Karate Expos. In one video, in fact, the monk in question is using oddly shaped rocks and first proving how tough they are before shattering them with his hand and forearm. The beauty of this, not unlike what we've stated before, is that it's not only a believable superpower, it's a proven one. Even a scientist weighed in and noted that there's no mysticism involved in this one. It's all about strength, technique, and precision, something that monks just so happen to have in bulk at times. Oh, and don't worry. As that one monk would show, they don't get it right every time, but when they do, it's absolutely awesome. Number five, Monk Spear SUV. Now that kind of sounds like a good television series. Do any of you want to help us write it? But seriously, a monk was once tasked with showcasing this superpower during the grand opening of one of the monk temples. He went and put a spear on his neck, put the spear on the SUV, and then pushed it a certain distance. Now sadly, we can all but guess that not everything here is as it seems, if for no other reason than it's very probable that the SUV in question was in neutral, which means that it had no brake to hold it in place, and thus it would be easy to go and push around. Furthermore, if you look at the spear, it doesn't really bend all that much despite being pushed against a big car, so obviously it was strengthened for the task at hand. That being said, it doesn't diminish the fact that the monk had to do all of this in one take, and with the spear pressed against his neck nonetheless. That could not have felt good, and yet he did it all without complaint. Matter of fact, have you ever heard a monk complain? Because we haven't. Let us know about it in the comments below if you have. Number 4. Neckband This one's going to be a little bit harder to disprove because of what's happening in front of a large group of people and the results that are literally speaking for themselves. Here you have a monk who is crazy enough and perhaps dumb enough to go and do something as insane as wrapping a bar of metal around his neck multiple times. And as you can see from watching the video, he's absolutely doing it with a bar that at the very least has some kind of density to it because it's being held by some people from the crowd, and it would have been easy for them to accidentally bend it if it wasn't strong in its own right. Just as shocking and perhaps stupid is the fact that he went and wrapped the bar around his neck multiple times just to go and cement the effect that he had done it for real. Now this is a serious feat of strength, if for no other reason than if he had done it wrong, he would have probably suffocated. Number three, levitation. Monks have inevitably been tied to the supernatural elements of the world, they do exist, the Winchesters don't lie, and have been tied to various techniques that range from manipulating the insides of the human body to projecting themselves to other planes of existence, and of course, everyone's favorite, levitation. That brings us to this video where a man goes and meets a monk who claims that they have reached a state of clarity and power so much that he can go and levitate right off the ground and see seemingly does so right before the man's eyes. The key word here though is seemingly, because as you can guess it's actually a trick and can be proven in many ways. First and foremost, the monk goes and moves from his original position to one near a curtain, and you can also see him just barely fidgeting with a hook and a lift. If he really could do levitation, he wouldn't need to be in a specific spot, he'd be able to do it on a dime, right? Well, exactly. This is a similar technique to what magicians of all ages and backgrounds have been doing for years, so no, monks cannot actually levitate. Well, yet that is. Number two, rock meet fingers. Now, I've already shown you variations on certain things in regards to monks' strength with their hands and fingers, but why not take it up a notch? Because in this video, we see a monk going and using rocks and being a good guy and proving that they're hard rocks, systematically goes and breaks them down with less and less fingers, starting with four and then two, and then finally breaking a rock with one single finger. 
But how is it possible? Well, using a lot of the techniques that I've talked about earlier, first and foremost, the monk no doubt trained his fingers to dish out incredible amounts of power, as well as endure all kinds of pain. Then, not unlike with the previous rock-breaking feat, he went and used the right amount of pressure and precision, all in order to break the rock, which he proved when he wasn't able to break it with one finger the first go-around. And to be clear, no, I don't recommend that you go and try this yourself at home, but if you do, just have 911 on standby. Number 1. MJ Now I know what you're thinking, right? Michael Jordan? <laughs> no. It's Michael Jackson! Just kidding. But could you imagine what Michael Jordan would do on the basketball court if he had Michael Jackson in his corner and a Shaolin monk training them both? Well, I'm actually talking about a man named MJ, who's a modern Shaolin monk, but in a twist, not only does he have a family, his whole family are monks as well. But why is that important? Well, because they don't actually live in a temple or a monastery. They live in a regular place via Waltham Cross. Their goal as a family is to go and incorporate the Shaolin Way into the lives of those around them. And when you watch videos of them in action, you can see they're pretty epic, especially Mr. MJ himself. What led them down this path though? Well, that's up for them to tell you, but the results absolutely speak for themselves. To the point where we would honestly love to be their neighbors, as Mr. Rogers would want us to, of course. Admit it, your neighbors are not as cool as MJ and his family. And that's all from the realm of monks and their super freaky abilities. Are you amazed that they have these kind of superpowers despite still being human? Do you think that many of these abilities are more than meets the eye? Or do you think that it would be in your best interest to go to a temple and learn from them? Let us know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.